A fluid is anything that can flow, generally either a gas or a liquid. If there is relative motion between the fluid and an object, either because there is motion of the object through the fluid, or if the fluid moves past the object, then the object experiences a drag force that opposes the relative motion and points in the direction in which the fluid flows relative to the object. Let's focus our attention for this lesson to cases where air is the fluid and the body or the object is blunt, like the body of a falling skydiver, rather than slender, like a javelin. And the relative motion is fast enough so that the air becomes turbulent and breaks up into swirls behind the object. In such cases, the magnitude of the drag force, labeled here with the letter D, is related to the relative speed by an experimentally determined drag coefficient, C. So the drag coefficient uh, is typically in numerical value from about 0.4 to 1, but it can vary with large changes in velocity. We're going to ignore those complications and just consider it to be a uh, constant number. This Greek letter rho here, that is the density of the air. So the air density affects how much drag is present. Then the letter A in the equation stands for the effective cross-sectional area of the body taken perpendicular to the velocity V. That's why we call it the cross-sectional area of the body because it depends what is the area perpendicular to the wind or the flow of the fluid. And lastly, V is the velocity. Let's look at the example of a falling skydiver. This is my friend Vivek, skydiving for his birthday. The drag force, D, is directed upward. Its magnitude gradually increases from zero as the speed of the body increases. This upward force, D, opposes the downward gravitational force, labeled F sub G, on the body. Using Newton's second law and summing the forces in the vertical direction gives us D minus F G, equals ma, where m is the mass of the skydiver and a is his acceleration. If the skydiver falls for long enough, about 15 seconds, the drag force will equal the force of gravity and the acceleration will be zero. He will be falling without speeding up. This is known as the skydiver's terminal velocity, and for the laid out skydiver, this is about 120 miles per hour. So we start with our equation of the sum of the forces in the vertical direction, the drag minus the force of gravity. And, and we said at terminal velocity, the acceleration is zero because these forces equal each other. So I set it equal to zero. I replace drag with the uh, expression we have for drag. And now I solve the equation for the velocity, which is for this case, the terminal velocity, because I said the acceleration was zero. And I come up with this, this expression for terminal velocity. And I see that changes in the drag coefficient, in the density of the fluid, or the cross-sectional area of the body will change my terminal velocity. See how the cameraman is able to adjust his position to be above or below Vivek? If everyone is supposedly falling at the same terminal velocity of 120 miles per hour, how is he able to do this? By bending or straightening his legs, he changes his cross-sectional area and changes his terminal velocity, just like Vivek does when he opens his parachute. Let's see how a drastic difference in fluid density affects terminal velocity. Here a pearl is dropped through two fluids of differing densities, a thick and a thin shampoo. Notice the different velocities through the fluid. Here we have a situation where we have four model boats, all with the same cross-sectional area, but different contoured hulls, giving them different drag coefficients. We see they're being pulled by the same force, so the less drag means faster speed through the water.
Of course, fuel efficiency is highly influenced by drag force, which is why wind tunnel testing of cars is a major concern in design and testing of new automobiles. Less drag means less propulsion force needed to keep a car moving at constant velocity and thus less fuel consumption, whether it be from a gasoline engine or an electric battery.